Okay, so about four or five months ago, I started writing in a journal. God was just doing so much in my life. He was doing all of these miracles and teaching me things, reproving me on things, and I wanted to write it down to make sure that I was just able to keep track of everything that was happening and is happening. Um, but about a month ago, uh, after church one day, I went up to the front to get prayed for and um, went to go talk to this one woman. I just basically told her, uh, you know, God is really putting something on my heart. He's putting something on my heart to do and um, I'm having a hard time just doing it and taking that step to do it. And um, what I did not tell her was it, that it's actually this video that I'm making right now. Uh, so she began to pray for me and it was this beautiful prayer. I started crying and about halfway through the prayer, she says, that she can feel the Holy Spirit. She's like, oh, I can feel the Holy Spirit really strong right now. I'm like, okay. Um, and then she she gets quiet for a minute, and then she asks me if I've recently started a journal. And I was like, oh, Lord, you're speaking to her. I knew it right then. I got chills through my body. I was like, oh my goodness, God. I said, yes, I did. And she said, there's something in that journal that you need to release, Hannah. And the Lord is saying that it needs to be released. It's important. It's not about you. It's about other people. So I was like, okay. Um, so I went home that night. I prayed. I prayed um, afterwards. And then I went home, opened my journal. And sure enough, my journal just magically opens to this exact testimony that I'm going to share. It was completely God. It was like a light shining down from heaven uh, on this entry, this journal entry that I did. So I am going to do that right now. I'm going to release this testimony. If you can't watch it all the way through, then just click off now and don't watch it because I want to make sure that uh, you guys don't get the wrong impression of God. And this testimony has a lot of twists and turns. Um, it has a lot of me kind of shaking in my faith and um, the end is going to explain everything and you'll have a full understanding of what happened and why it happened. So a little background. I'm a Christian. I was raised a Christian. I was born again at a very young age. Absolutely adored and loved God. However, um, I didn't have a full understanding of God and I misunderstood that his grace was a license for me to just do whatever I wanted. So uh, I, I being drunk or getting drunk was just a regular thing for me. Um, premarital sex, um, cursing, like using cuss words all the time. And I was like, God loves me no matter what. So I just had like this, this misunderstanding. Um, my heart wasn't to be disobedient to him. It's just that when I read God's word, I read it through a filter of what I thought I believed and so therefore everything that was grace was like emphasize 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 um, but back in 2020 is when I just kind of fell to my knees and I said God show me who you are and I'm gonna read your word and I'm gonna take off my filters and I want you to show me who you are I want to I want to know Jesus Christ like I want to know him because I didn't really feel like I did um, and I didn't so I began reading his word with no filters. I wasn't getting any information. I stopped listening to mostly all teachings. I didn't have any, any outside influence, just God's word. And man, oh man, my eyes were completely open to how much God loves me um, and really what his grace meant and, and what his grace means. And it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. So that's kind of where my story starts back in 2020. At this point, I start praying heavily. I do speak in tongues, so I started praying in the spirit a lot. I really wanted to start pushing um, intercession. I was a stay-at-home mom, and I thought, well, I can't really serve in a lot of ways, but I can intercede for people, and I can intercede for things. And so I started doing that, um, and, uh, and then I had my third daughter, and that kind of you know took a dip because I was busy being a mama of a newborn. Back in 2022, I was able to start picking up my prayer life again because my daughter was almost a year old and so things were kind of like getting steady. And so I, uh, I start praying in my prayer closet and I'm getting up at like five o'clock in the morning because this is the only time that I have to myself to pray before my kids wake up. Once they wake up, that's it. Like my day is, is pretty much just with them. So um, I, I started a prayer group on Every morning, anyone could pop in and join if they wanted to. And um, we were, it was over Zoom. So we were just praying for a lot of different things. But one of the things that we were really heavily going into prayer for, and I was, uh, was um, coming against kidnappings in our area and also witchcraft in our area. 
So it was incredible. Like I could feel the power. Um, if you don't pray, if you have not really spent time in your prayer closet, it's powerful and it works, let me tell you. Uh, but the enemy did not like what I was doing, apparently, because about three weeks into this, um, uh, one night he began attacking my daughter, like attacking my daughter full force. It wasn't like it started to trickle in slowly to my daughter. It was boom, like it hit me like a train hitting someone who's completely oblivious, okay? So um, I just remember one night, I remember the exact night, um, I'm laying in bed and we're sleeping. She sleeps in our bed with us and she keeps like waking up and waking up. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh, she just needs to, you know, nurse. So I'm trying to take care of her that way, but I'm half asleep. And then she keeps screaming and I'm like, wait, wait a minute, what, what's going on? This isn't normal. So I wake up and I start watching her. I'm observing her. <sighs> I'll never forget it. She was having full on body muscle convulsions, spasms. I don't even know what to call them. There is no word to call them. Like I, I've never even, I've never found anything that's like this, but basically every three seconds, I'm not kidding guys. It was like every, let's say three to five seconds, one of her limbs would go flying up. So at first it was like, I'd see her arm whoosh, go flying up like as far as it could. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? And she's like, like crying out. Then her leg went flying up. Then it looks like someone has her by the back of the neck and they're like ripping her neck back as hard and fast as they can and then dropping her. Okay, these spasms are happening like every three seconds. Obviously, she's not sleeping. At this point, I'm like full on like awake and whoa, what's happening to my daughter, you know? So I'm with her all night. I'm just trying to comfort her as much as I can, hold her close to me, um, you know, just all the things that a mother can do to comfort their child. I basically didn't get any sleep that night. She didn't either. But the next morning she wakes up, as soon as she's awake, no problem, nothing, nothing's wrong. So I'm like, okay. She goes to take a nap. The moment she falls asleep, boom, it comes back. And I'm like, what in the world is happening right now? So then that second night, boom, you know, she goes to sleep. Of course, she's having these spasms. And at this point, I'm like, oh, God, something is up here. What in the world is going on? So I begin to just pray. I'm laying down with her. I'm praying. And I'm, you know, this is probably like the middle of the night. I don't even know what time it is. And I ask God, I'm like, okay, Father, what's going on here? Like, what's going on here? And I'm just laying there with her and I'm praying quietly. And as soon as I say, Father, what's going on here? I get this vision in my mind and it lasts for like three seconds. And it's a vision of a demon. And it's the side profile of a demon. I can see the side of his face. And he has this big green, what's this called? Re no, diamond. <laughs> he has this big green diamond eye. It's almost covering up his entire face. And then it's gone. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like I just got a vision from God. I close my eyes again. I'm trying to re-see it, but I can't, you know, cause you can't like, like, I don't have the power to have a vision. Like God has to give you one. So I'm like, this was a vision for sure. So I get super excited. I'm like, yes, I know what to do to handle this. I'm going to pray even harder. I'm going to get harder in my prayer closet. So uh, that was not the right answer guys. Just spoil alert. Um, what I should have done in this, in this, uh, scenario is my mistake was that I didn't immediately ask God what I need to do. I should have gotten real quiet and I should have said, okay, God, how do you want me to handle this? How do I need to handle this? What is causing this? Um, but you know, I was, I was excited. So, you know, I, I, I start to get hard in my prayer closet. And by the way, like when I say my prayer closet, it's like I was trying to pray when she was sleeping and stuff like that um, because the five o'clock in the morning thing completely stopped after this point. I tried to hold on to it. I tried to make it work, but I literally physically had to hold my daughter so she could just barely get enough sleep because I'm trying to hold her limbs down um, to, to be able to sleep every night. Um, and this did last a few months, so. So I begin to get in my prayer closet, it's not working, and I'm like, what's going on here? Um, and after about a week or two, I start to feel really hopeless because it is not improving. If anything, it's like, I mean, it was already at a, a, a 10 out of 10, so it, it wasn't any worse, but it just was like, why isn't anything improving? I, I wasn't being able to pray as much. Um, I just, I started to feel really exhausted from not getting any sleep. And she was a little bit more grumpy during the day, um, but still like when, and during waking hours, she would be completely fine. Um, so 
I decide to take, we decide to take her to the children's hospital to get her checked up, take her to the general doctor at the children's hospital and to neurologists and they say everything's fine with your baby, she's perfectly fine. Um, in that two week span, um, she had started walking, she was saying words, like, so they were like, there's nothing wrong with her. There's nothing wrong with her. Like, they kind of just thought I was being an over paranoid mom that, okay, like this mom is just a little bit, you know, she's a little bit paranoid about her baby. Um, but at least I had relief that there was nothing wrong with her. Uh, and, you know, I could at least uh, feel comfortable with that. So, um, but again, nothing's getting better. I, I, I don't know what to do. Um, and so my husband decides that he's gonna fast for us. And so he, uh, he began to fast and he has some Freemasonry in his bloodline. Actually, the day that her convulsion started, it was the same day that we found out that he had Freemasonry in his bloodline. So we, you know, there's probably something correlated with that. He decides to fast for four days, okay? On the last day of his fast, so that night, her convulsions or muscle spasms, whatever you want to call them, dropped by like 50%. So they were still happening, but instead of her neck looking like someone was ripping it back, it like, it was like, it was almost like it was, it, it was like stumped. Like whatever was doing it didn't have as much power anymore. And my husband and I were completely floored by this. And this is how it remained for the rest of the time that she had these spasms. They never went back to how severe they were that the first two weeks um, she had them. We were totally floored by this because we had never known anything about fasting. We didn't fast ourselves. Um, and kind of just my attitude about fasting prior to 2020 when I had this like radical encounter with God um, and I really began to get to know him. My, my idea about fasting prior to that was that it was for like religious people who don't know about God's grace. Like once again, <laughs> you know, I, I, because I didn't read the New Testament with eyes to see and as I began to read, hey, Paul fasted and hey, the first century believers fasted. Like this is a thing. Like this is, this is not something that went out with Jesus Christ. So, so that was really cool for us to see the power. Um, however, she was still having them. And as you know, a month goes by, um, and again, I'm still so tired. So she's, you know, we're getting some sleep at night, but it's like half the night I'm not sleeping. I'm just holding her body as tightly as I can to mine, nursing her, doing everything that I can. Um, and she's getting crankier and crankier throughout the days because she's tired. And uh, her appetite for food went down during this time, so she just wanted to nurse around the clock. And I just started to feel like so hopeless and so exhausted. Um, I, I was grabbing for straws, you guys. We, we did deliverance. We, I threw out everything in my house that I could think had any sort of evil attachment to it, which there wasn't any. There wasn't any because I had already done that in 2020, um, gotten rid of just all the secular things that I listened to and, and you know, just wanted my house to be only filled with God's spirit and the Holy Spirit. So, so yeah, I'm grabbing for straws. I'm doing all these things, you know, well-meaning, wonderful hearted believers are, are, you know, I'm going to advice for anyone. I'm grabbing for straws and everyone's like, do this, try this, you know, go into the courts of heaven. You have to speak it this way. You have to do like this. And like the more and more information I got, the more and more confused and frustrated and exhausted I became because yeah, none of those things were working. It felt like I was having to jump through 30 different hoops just to give her some relief. I did not know what was causing this, but I knew it was demonic. Also during this, this time, there was, I think, once or twice where there was an actual um, evil spirit in our room, whatever you want to call it. I call it a demon because that's what the Bible calls it. Uh, and this, uh, my daughter, she woke up screaming at the top of her lungs one night, you know, and um, she's pointing to the corner of the room, like something's in our room, something's in our room. And I'm like, okay, so I, I use the name of Jesus Christ and whatever it was left. Um, this happened twice, I believe, but, uh, even still, she was still having these muscle spasms. So I'm like, what in the, like, how does the enemy have access to us? I don't understand. You know, basically I was, I was so blinded and confused and frustrated because the enemy was putting all these thoughts into my head. I began to doubt that God loved me. I felt like God had totally left me. I felt like I was abandoned by him. I didn't understand. I'm like, my father, like I've never been closer to you in my life. Like I'm giving everything I can to you. And this is what happens. Like, I'm so confused. You know, people are telling me God's allowing it. And I'm just like, oh my Lord. 
I'm exhausted, I'm confused, I'm so, I feel so alone, I feel so alone. I'm isolating myself at this point and um, I didn't wanna be around anyone, didn't wanna talk to anyone, I avoided going to church, I avoided going to any functions. I just didn't wanna be around anyone because I was so empty and sad inside and, um, and hopeless. And that's not my personality. I'm a very bubbly, very like loving. I love people. I enjoy being around people. I really enjoy listening to people and hearing about their lives and getting, you know, just to just to spend time with others. But I did not want to do that at all during this. We actually end up moving out of our house for a week. We went and stayed in an Airbnb because I'm like, well, it's the house. Like, it's got to be the house because like, what? I've done everything. It's the house. It's the house. So we move out of our house and Nope, it wasn't the house. <laughs> She's still having these issues. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm, I'm desperate. We come home from the Airbnb and it's like a couple weeks later and I'm just, I'm so over everything. I don't, I don't, I can barely eat. I'm just so, I'm so depressed. And one night, my husband takes our two older kids to church. I stay at home with my baby. She's a year old, like I said. And I'm trying to feed her some blueberries. And I'm like, here, eat some blueberries, eat some blueberries, but she won't eat them. And I'm just like, I'm so frustrated. I'm like, why won't you eat these blueberries? Like, I start crying because I, I, I just, I feel like she won't eat regular food. And so I just run out of that room. I remember running into my bedroom, my bedroom closet, and just falling to my knees. I had hit rock bottom. And I just start weeping uncontrollably like, really weeping like I've never cried in my life like where your abs are hurting and all I could say over and over through these sobs and through these tears and the 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 the, the mucus all of it all I kept saying was God have mercy 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 my family like I must have sit, repeated this phrase 30 times and of course then my daughter comes in and she's like you know she, I have to go and take care of her and so maybe this lasted for five minutes I'm not sure so I pull myself together I get my daughter and I go and I just lay in bed with her I'm putting her down for bed I remember looking at my bedroom window and I just felt like I just want to fall asleep and not wake up I can't live like this and I don't want to live like this and this is this is I I, I don't know what to do I knew it was caused by um, I knew what was happening was demonic. I knew it was, it wasn't like she had a physical ailment, but I felt so frustrated. I could not figure out what to do. I had gone through every single outlet I could think of and nothing had worked or helped or anything. So I just was staring out the window like, okay, this is it, I'm done. And then we went to sleep. And then 10 hours later, we woke up. <laughs> My daughter slept through that entire night and did not wake up once, which was completely shocking to me because that had not happened since this started. We were usually up all night long, me literally holding her, doing anything that I can. It was unbelievable. And I woke up with such a supernatural joy, peace, excitement in my heart. And I'm like, yeah! God, you heard my cries, you heard my cries. So then I think about it that morning and I'm like, why was I crying out for God to have mercy? It never crossed my mind that I needed to ask God for mercy because I did not know that I had opened a door to let the enemy in prior to this, okay? And I'm gonna get into this in a minute. I had idolatry in my life, but I had no clue that this was what was causing it. Um, and so I'm like, how did I know how to ask God for mercy? Those words were literally flowing out of me without me thinking. And I want to read a verse to you guys because when I saw this verse, I was like, oh, this is it. It's uh, Romans 8, 26. It says, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. This is exactly what happened to me. I did not know that I needed God's mercy. I did not know. And... And the Holy Spirit did. So when I fell to my knees, I'm at rock bottom. I can't go one more step. I can't do it anymore. The Holy Spirit just, boom, like it just came out of my mouth, like uncontrollable. Okay, it just spilled out over and over and over. And 
that day, that day, I remember going grocery shopping and we were very healthy eaters, okay? I was a very healthy eater. We did not buy junk food. We did not buy processed food. I should say I did not buy it for my family. I did not make it for my family. Everything was made like, you know, just from <laughs> whatever grew out of the ground, basically. I mean, within reason, okay? But um, I remember going to the grocery store and that still small voice was like, Hannah, get whatever looks good to you. And I'm like, really? <laughs> really, should I? And it was like, yeah, do it. So I go through the grocery store. Instead of getting, instead of being in like the vegetable area and getting all our vegetables and all like the healthy things, I'm like getting Pop-Tarts and chips and cookies and soda, frozen pizzas, chicken nuggets, like all the all the junk foods crackers like all the junk foods that i can think of that just look good i'm like i'm like going up and out every aisle and i'm like i don't even care right now i'm so happy like i know god's got us now like i just felt so much joy and peace in my heart god had put that in me that night um and so after this my daughter got better everything was downhill from here my daughter got completely recovered and what had happened was the Lord showed me over time after that day, me buying the junk food and I continued to buy it for like a few months. Um, the Lord showed me that I had idolatry in my life when it came to healthy living and I had made healthy living my God. I had put all of my trust into healthy living and eating right and, and living like in this, this healthy protected bubble that I thought was going to protect my, my husband and my children from disease and illness and you know anything bad happening to their physical body. Um, this happened slowly over time because about 10 years, 10 or 11 years ago, I decided, hey, like, let's start looking into eating healthy because some people that I knew were doing it. Um, I'm like, sure, like, let's look into it. I had these chronic health issues that I had had for as long as I could remember. And, um, and nothing worked to clear them up. Like I bought so many over the counter, everything, everything, everything. And it was just a normal thing for me to have these chronic health issues. Um, so once we started eating healthy, we implemented eating healthy, um, these chronic health issues cleared up. And I was like, I'm onto something. Like, what is this? I had no clue that what you eat can affect your body so intensely. And so I'm like, well, if a little bit is good, then a lot must be great. So I started pouring so much of my time, my energy, my focus onto learning about healthy living, learning about all the evils of the world, everything that's going to cause every kind of sickness or disease, you know. Um, by the end of this whole, like, studying, I mean, you guys, when I say I was going down rabbit holes, like rabbit holes that lasted miles long on the internet because I thought that I was gaining this great information. And when I say rabbit holes, rabbit holes are basically like these super, super long holes that you go down and they're dead ends because what is the result of it? Like what good comes out of it having so much information that, um, that, that you just feel like, oh, well, I, I just, I can't stop. I couldn't stop consuming it. Um, so I, I end up, um, you know, getting to the point where I was like ready to move to the woods, you know, <laughs> for people who have gone down the holes of healthy living, you're going to laugh at this, but you know, it's true. You're like ready to pack up, move out to the middle of the woods somewhere, maybe like in Alaska. Okay. Build like a log cabin out of wood that you chopped down yourself and put like aluminum foil around it. Okay, and then eat from your garden and your, your cattle that you grow <laughs> because everything is toxic and everything is poisonous. And y'all, it does not take a rocket scientist to figure out that broccoli is better than Doritos. Okay, it does not take a rocket scientist to know that glass containers are better than plastic containers. Um, homemade food is better than fast food. These are simple things that are fantastic and they're wonderful. And we should want to consume the food that God intended for our bodies. But um, I took it to such an extreme and the Bible says that a false balance is an abomination to God. And I was like, here's the balance. And I was like, woo, over here. So. I knew I had this issue and prior to all of this even happening to my daughter, I like maybe a few months before this happened to my daughter, I threw out so much of my medicine cabinet, like all my remedies, 
all of my health things and I was just like, I, I know I have an issue and I got rid of all of it, thousands of dollars worth of stuff. But I could not let go in my mind. I could not let go of it in my mind. I was, it was a stronghold that I was holding on to. It's like I was white knuckling it because when my kids would get sick, I would feel, I would feel fear come over me. Um, when any, when my kids had any kind of ailment, it was like fear knocked me off of my feet because I knew all this information now and it was not empowering. It was suffocating me. Every, like every new book that I would read about how to, you know, be healthy and healthy living, it was like another chain was put on me and another chain was put on me. And I was so bogged down in bondage that I just could not, I, I didn't know how to free myself. I did not know how to free my mind from all of this this garbage that I had put in it and I so desperately wanted to trust God in this area but I didn't know how and so he began to show me this and he's like Hannah like you you've really made food and healthy living your God and um, and in first John chapter 5 verse 20 21 it says Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. And that's exactly what happened to me. I allowed healthy living to take God's place in my heart because I began to trust in that. And I like the King James Version too. It says, Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Ah, oh, Y'all, idolatry is a real thing in the believer's life, okay? It's a real thing. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're like, well, I don't have an issue with healthy living. That's fine, but examine yourself, examine your life and just look and ask God, is there any area in my life where I have replaced you with this thing, where I have made this an idol? And it could be money, your trust in money, you trust in your skills, you trust in your good looks and, and getting attention from others, you trust in um, you know relationships. There, I mean, there's like, I could, I could list a thousand different things that can take the place of God in our hearts, but it really is a real thing because especially when you're you're filling your mind with it. If you're consuming your mind with information all the time um, that isn't godly, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're walking into idolatry. That's what you're doing. This is the straight up facts because you can tell yourself, I mean, I got to the point where I was literally going down rabbit holes I should have, I, I knew better not to go down. I was, I was learning from medical psychics about food. And you know what I told myself? I said, I am so spiritually mature, it's not going to affect me. It's not going to affect me. That's what I told myself, and I believed it. And that's not true, guys. You are not spiritually mature enough to be able to learn from evil sources. Um, and thank God that God woke me up to that through my sister who actually woke me up to it. And I mean, the, the second that she, you know, told me like, get away from this, it is evil. I did because I knew subconsciously, I knew in my heart, I knew in my spirit, man, it wasn't right. That, 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 that me following these, uh, this specific person who was hearing from a, you know, a special spirit, it was not the spirit of God. So, uh, lesson learned, but Regardless, guys, be really careful about what you're consuming. This is why the majority of what a Christian cons consumes should be the Word of God, and it should be, you know, worship music. Everything is going to have an effect on your mind, right? The Bible says in Psalms 4:23, "Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life." You have to guard your heart like you would guard your newborn baby. Okay. For instance, okay, if you're like a new mom, you have a newborn baby and you go grocery shopping and you're pushing your baby around in the cart, are you gonna leave your cart in the freezer section and walk over to the vegetable section because you forgot to get some bananas and then like come back? No, no, no good parent in their right mind would leave their newborn child alone in a public space. They would not do that. And that's because we're guarding our child with all diligence. But the Bible says the same thing about our hearts. You have to guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. What you are facing right now in your life may very well be because you, it's because of what's in your heart because you're not guarding your heart with all diligence. And it's, it may seem like what you're doing is the right path, but if you are not following God's word, 
I mean following God's word, consuming his word like it's food and you're starving. Mm -mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. You're not on the right path. Like that sucks to hear. And I'm sorry to say it, but I have to tell you the truth because I don't want you to experience what I experienced. And I don't want you to get to the end of your life and, and it be like, wait a minute, what was I doing? What did I do? And it's too late. No, guys, the Bible, it's so good. God is so good. He warns us. He loves us so much that he's telling us, y'all don't let idolatry in your life. Don't consume anything else more than you consume me. Don't let anything replace God in your hearts. And Woo, this was a huge lesson for me to learn. It was a huge lesson for me to learn. But the story ain't over, okay? Because then I had to deal with fear and I had to deal with this other area of my life that I was not walking with God in. So my daughter gets healed. Awesome. Everything's back to normal. And I'm like, I'm gonna get back in my prayer closet. However, I had some hesitation because the last time I was in my prayer closet, my daughter got attacked. Like the enemy was like mad about what I was praying about and he came after me hard, okay? So I'm like, whew, like, okay, I'm gonna do it. Get back in my prayer closet. Within about a week, bam, my daughter starts getting attacked again. And I'm like, oh no. So I stop praying. The issues go away. Hmm. This happens a few times, maybe like four or five times. And I start thinking like, what I thought I got this taken care of and I did you guys I did get it taken care of but now I had some trauma I had some trauma in my heart from what had happened and I was not dealing with it in the way that I needed to so again I'm grabbing for straws and I'm like I, I I got to this point so this this happens for a few months okay this happens for a few months and I'm like frustrated again and I'm like god I feel like I can't pray to you like every time I pray the enemy attacks my daughter and then when I stop praying he he really he lets her go for instance, one night, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna get my prayer closet. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go hard. I do it. That night, I'm laying in bed with my daughter. She wakes up screaming at the top of her lungs, pointing out our window, pointing out our window, like terrified. And I know she's seeing something evil. It's a, it's a spirit, it's an evil spirit outside of our window. And I'm like, oh! So I use the name of Jesus Christ and I start speaking in tongues and she's calm. But the moment that I stopped speaking in tongues, she's screaming, pointing out the window again. So it took her about like 45 minutes to fall back asleep. This, and this, this was, this is the kind of stuff that started happening. Okay. And I was just like, Oh, like, I don't want to pray. Lord, I don't want to pray. Like what, what? I felt stuck as a Christian. I felt so stuck. I'm like, I keep trying to pray. And then I stop for a while because I'm scared. And then she, like, it was just this vicious cycle and I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, God, I need an answer. Like, what do I do? I got rid of the idolatry. Like, I am as clean as I can possibly be before you. What do I do? What am I missing? I did not know what I was missing, y'all. So I'm talking to my mom one day. And um, I'm, I'm just, I'm like, Mom, I don't know what to do. I, I was crying to her. I was crying to my mom. And she's like, t she's starting to minister to me. She, pray she prays for me. And then she tells me something. And she says, Hannah, resist the devil and he will flee. And I'm like, mom, I've been resisting the devil. And then she says it again, Hannah, resist the devil and he will flee. And so she keeps talking to me. We get off the phone and resist the devil and he will flee keeps repeating in my mind. And I'm like, okay, father, I think you're highlighting that, but I feel like I've been resisting him. Like, what else do I do? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I need you to spell it out for me. Like, I'm too stupid to figure this out without you. Help me, God. And so that night... This was a private conversation with my mom, by the way. Nobody was listening to this conversation. That night, we're doing our little Bible study with our family, and my daughter wants to pick out the verse that we're gonna focus on that night. And I'm like, okay, honey, pick, pick out the verse that you wanna focus on, you know? So she's flipping through her Bible. Da -da 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 -da. You know, there's thousands of verses in this Bible, all right? From Genesis all the way to Revelation. She starts in Genesis, and she's just like looking, looking. Five minutes goes by, and she goes, mommy, I found the verse. She's all, James 4, 7, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. And my jaw drops. I cannot believe that out of the thousands of verses, this is the verse that my daughter chooses. And I'm like, Lord, you are real. Like, wow. 
it was just, I knew he was confirming it. And that's what's so beautiful about our God. He always confirms what he tells us, guys. He always confirms it. Just like he confirmed this video that I'm making right now because I was so, I was so gun shy to make it, but he confirmed it, not just in that, that prayer that I got, but in other ways since then, he's confirmed for me to make this video. He loves us. He wants to make sure we know it's him speaking to us. So I'm like, okay, God, you're telling me something. You're telling me something here. So I, I'm like, all right, all right put the kids down for bed. I fall asleep with them. I wake up sometime around like two to 3 AM and I wake up and I, uh, it's heavy on my heart. God, you're telling me to resist the devil and he will flee. I have submitted to you, God. Like the first part of that verse is important. And like, let's not ignore that. Therefore submit to God. But my life was in full surrender to him. So I'm like, I, I got that one checked off. Where do I, like, how do I resist the devil? You know, and so um, I'm like, God, you just need to show me. So I get up, I turn on the light in the living room. I open my Bible and I'm like, Father, just show me what to do. My Bible opens up to Matthew chapter four and my eyes fall upon Jesus Christ being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. And immediately it's like all the puzzle pieces in my mind fell into place place. And I finally, for the first time, had clarity about what I needed to do. And if you know that passage, then you know that Jesus Christ, well, if you don't know that passage, it's about Jesus Christ. He fasts for 40 days and 40 nights. And during this time, Satan comes at him to tempt him. And every time Satan comes at him with a temptation, Jesus Christ rebuttal is not something like you have to jump through 30 hoops and you got to do all these special crazy things. It's simply Jesus Christ spoke the scriptures to Satan and it shut Satan down each time to the point where Satan finally left. Okay. Jesus Christ didn't have to argue with Satan. He didn't have to, you know, say this special prayer and do these special things. All he did was speak the scripture to Satan. Man, it's like my head exploded because I knew this. I knew this passage. I knew this scripture. I knew the word of God was my sword. I, I knew that was because we would put on our whole armor every day with my kids. Like, let's put our whole armor, you know, the helmet of salvation, the, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. But I did not understand how to use it as my weapon. In Ephesians chapter six, Paul is sharing about how we we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The things that you right now are going through, you are not dealing with a flesh and blood experience. You are dealing with, it's the Bible says it's principalities, it's rulers and high places. You're basically dealing with the, the kingdom of darkness, Satan's kingdom. But when we look at it through fleshly eyes, our flesh will never, what we do will never be able to, be, to defeat, defeat Satan. We can't. We have no power against him in our own strength. But we do when we are in God's strength. And God does not leave us as these, these children who have no, no way of fighting back when the enemy comes at them. He's given us everything that we need. And in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, you're not fighting against flesh and blood. This is how you fight your battles. And then it goes into the whole armor of God. Well, the pinnacle of this armor is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And the Bible says that the, the word of God is like a two-edged sword that cuts through anything. It's the sharpest. In Revelation, I was just reading this recently. Um, it's giving a, it's describing an image of Jesus Christ and his beauty and his glory and his majesty. And it says that a sharp sword is coming out of his mouth that's double-edged. And I was like, oh, Lord, like your word is so good. It's so powerful. And so I understood that what I was lacking in my life was the word of God. I would read the word of God at my convenience. I would read the word of God to fall asleep at night. I would read the word of God if I could fit it in during my day. The word of God was more of something that was like this pretty, like, oh, this is nice, like, this is nice, like, we'll take it off our shelf, you know? And I, I should read my, my Bible, because that's what a good Christian does, so that's what I'm gonna do, and, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I'd rather listen to a YouTube sermon. You know, like, I would make all these excuses, like, well, I'm gonna actually listen to this sermon on YouTube, or I'm gonna do this, like, there was all these other things that I could do. I'm gonna worship. I'm gonna, nothing wrong with worshiping. Worshiping is fantastic, don't get me wrong. However, 
I was not picking up my sword. There's no replacement for your sword. And let me tell y'all, if you had a serial killer that was literally coming into your home and you knew he was coming and you had this like shotgun, okay? But you had it in the garage, in a safe, unloaded, locked. And then when the serial killer, killer comes in your house, you're like, I don't know what to do. Have, have mercy on me. Like, nobody would do that in their right mind. That's wild to even think about. Especially you men out there who got families. Are you kidding me? You would be up all night with that shotgun waiting for that guy to come. Like, come on my property and see what happens. That is your Bible. That is your Bible. I had to figure it out the hard way, guys. I had to figure out the hard way. Our Bible is our weapon. It's our sword. So let me tell you what happened next in this story, all right? I knew I needed to fill myself with the Bible. So I began reading the Bible every single day. I, the God gave me a certain amount of chapters to read every single day. And that is the goal that I have stuck with since he gave me that number. I'm like, I'm going to read this many chapters a day, come hell or high water. If that means I can't eat breakfast today, then that means I can't eat breakfast because that's my only time to read the Bible. That means I can't take a shower. Then that's what that means because this is the only time to read my Bible. Like that is how much I am like white knuckling my weapon now. Like my weapon is like this all the time now, guys. I began filling myself with the word, but I still was not getting my prayer closet because at this point I was pretty much paralyzed in fear. I was paralyzed in fear. I would go to like sit down and pray and I couldn't even open my mouth. Words wouldn't even come out because I was like so terrified. I felt like I either have to choose my daughter being healthy or being in my prayer closet. Okay. This was prior to me reading that passage about resist the devil and he will flee. Um, I felt I was crying to God all the time saying, God, I feel like I can't even be your child. Like I have to stay in my corner and just be terrified of the enemy when I know that's not right. I, but I don't know what to do. So again, my mom gives me that word. My daughter gives me that word. God gives me the word about, uh, Jesus Christ, what he used. I begin to fill myself with the word. I'm speaking the word out loud. I'm reading it, even if I'm tired at midnight, because that's like my old, like, let's say the kids are going to bed at 11 p.m. I force myself to get out of bed. I'm literally walking around my house, reading it out loud because I don't want to fall asleep. I don't want to fall asleep reading the word. It's that important to me at this point. I finally muster up the courage to get back in my prayer closet. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this. But I knew there was going to be some retaliation. Like I just knew there was. So I'm like preparing my mind. God's preparing my heart. He's showing me his word. I'm reading his word. I'm speaking his word. I'm especially every day speaking Psalm 91, over, Psalm 91 over my house in addition to the five chapters a day that I'm reading. And so I'm, um, I'm doing these things. And sure enough, I get my prayer closet. I'm starting to go hard again. What do you think happens within a week? My daughter starts getting attacked again. Um, it wasn't the same way as she was getting before, but this was like she's screaming it's very clear she's being attacked um and so I take her in my arms and she won't calm down I'm like taking her in my arms and I just start at first I panicked a little bit I'm like <gasps> you know it's that PTSD comes back for a few seconds and I'm like <gasps> oh no and then I'm like no 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 God has not given me the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and I'm just calming myself down with the scriptures remember the scriptures make the devil run so that fear leaves me because I'm speaking the scripture in my mind. I, 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 I hold my daughter in my arms and I just start aggressively speaking Psalm 91 in my mind over her. I'm speaking it over in my mind and she's trying to fall back asleep. But every time she does, it looks like something's like pulling her eyes open. Like that's what it looks like. And I'm like, no. And I'm just aggressive. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. Like I'm like going at it. You know, Psalms 91 is a fantastic Psalm for you to read every day. It's basically a prayer of protection over your home. Um, and so I, I begin to speak this over her. Um, and five minutes, her little body calms down and she closes her eyes finally. And then 10 minutes, she falls completely to sleep. And I'm like, I'm on cloud nine because up to this point that hadn't happened. I'm on cloud nine. I'm like jumping up and down in my spirit, just so excited. And I've hung on to it since I haven't backed down in my word since. And since my daughter has not been attacked at all. And it's been a couple of months now. Um, well, no, it's been longer than that. It's been like five months now, six months. And, um, and yeah, so 
That is the power of our God. That is the power of your sword. This thing is no joke, you guys. If you are a Christian that thinks that you can keep your sword on the shelf and that everything will be okay, it will not. The enemy will let you think that it's fine. He's going to give you a period of time where you're like, cool, I can totally just get into like neutral. I can be in neutral and, uh, and nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. He's going to give you that time of security, getting used to not being in your prayer closet, getting used to not being in your word. And then he's going to hit you hard, especially once you start walking in your calling. I'll tell you right now, like, but it's a beautiful thing. And what the enemy tried to do to me, he tried to stop me and I, he thought he had me. I, I thought he had me. Honestly, I thought it was over for me. I thought I was not like I was just I was doomed. That's how I felt. And no, I came back stronger than I ever have before. And I want to tell you, all I am so thankful for the experience. It was not fun going through it and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I really wouldn't. There's nothing worse than a parent seeing their child going through something. There's really nothing worse. <sighs> but I'm so glad that I got that experience because it gave me so much grit. It gave me so much endurance. The word of God and my relationship with God, it's like, it was like the nail in the coffin for me. I mean, nothing will ever be able to talk me out of God's word through the power of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for your grace and your wisdom and your power over my life. But I'm telling y'all, it was also, I don't think I could have let go of that idolatry had that not happened. I don't think my mind would have ever been able to let go of that fear of of having to forcing myself to be healthy in every single aspect and it controlling my mind so intensely without this experience happen happening because when it happened what i realized was i'm not in control anyway i tried so hard to protect my family through what we ate through extreme restrictions of you know just EMFs and I could go into the whole list of things, but I'm not going to waste you guys' time. But what I realized and what I saw through all of this is that I'm not in control. I'm not in control. And it's a beautiful thing. I don't want to be in control. And all of my fear left me. And it's like now when my kids get sick or something happens, I'm like, you good. God's going to take care of you. Come here. Let's pray for you. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> And it's so good to have freedom. Like my mind is free. The chains have been released from me. So am I saying that it's a bad thing to eat healthy? Please don't twist this, guys. It is not a bad thing to eat healthy. Like let's eat the food that God created for our bodies. Everyone is pretty much aware now that, that processed foods and junk foods and fast foods and all those things, they're going to make you feel like crap. And when you feel like crap, you're going to act like crap. Like it's going to be harder for you to renew your mind. It's going to be harder for you just to get through your day when you have all that brain fog. Um, so please understand the type of foods that you should eat, work it out with God, but don't, but, but don't be like me and think, Oh, if a little bit is good, then everything must be good. Yeah. God is so good. Christians, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ, you need this. This is not a maybe if I have time today, I'm going to get around to it. This is your sword. And without your sword, it, it, you know, you might as well be, you're, you're basically what you are is you're a soldier who's fighting against the enemy and you're in a bathing suit with no weapon. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. No soldier would do that, okay? In my case, I was that Christian, but I was kind of like in the back, so I was safer. <laughs> but then when I got into my prayer closet, you know, praying against kidnapping in my areas and witchcraft, it's like I went charging to the front lines, screaming at the enemy and, uh, and killing some of his people with rocks. Let's say I was throwing rocks at them. I started killing some of his people but I was in a bathing suit with not without my real weapon, okay? And that's why I, I got knocked so hard. <laughs> I got knocked so hard. Oh, God is good. God is so good, you guys. I just, I, I adore him. My relationship with him is sweeter than it's ever been. I am amazed at how much grace he has over my life, how much mercy he's had. Even when he saw me deep in my idolatry, he loved me. 
and he just wanted to help me out of it. And I will tell y'all, I'm free. And you can be free too if you're dealing with idolatry, but get in your word, let this fill your mind, let this fill your heart. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. It's a treasure, it's a treasure that he gave us. I love you guys so much.